Tonight on KION, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on the Central Coast today. A look at the visit met by protesters and how the Sheriff's Office is keeping the community safe. Plus, we'll introduce you to a local foundation that is planting the seeds of philanthropy by and for Latinos on the Central Coast. And I guess our rainy season's really here. Our second weather system of the week on the way, just in time for the weekend. Also, Watsonville Community Hospital is getting a new CEO after months of searching when he said to take over. KION News Channel 46 starts right now. Covering the Central Coast, this is KION News Channel 46 at 11 o'clock. Our community is here and we're watching and that we're paying attention. Republican presidential candidate and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in town today. His visit was met with protests as he got together with local ag leaders. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for KION News at 11. We begin with a presidential candidate visit to the Central Coast. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis holding a private fundraising event in Monterey County. As promised, his arrival came with protests from those who fight for farm worker rights. DeSantis is one of multiple candidates fresh off the GOP primary debate in Simi Valley Wednesday night. He's attempting to represent the Republican Party in the next presidential election. However, DeSantis isn't without criticism as those against his visit to Salinas have been actively protesting today. And Governor DeSantis left the Corral de Tierra Country Club just before noon where he was meeting with local ag leaders. KION's Anna Torreya spoke to angry protesters and the leaders of the Monterey County Republican Party. Tonight, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis visiting the Central Coast. Ag leaders in Monterey County welcoming the presidential candidate, while others not so much. Protesters standing across the entrance of Corral de Tierra, holding signs and making their message clear. We're going to protect our people at all costs, and we need to do that. And we need all leaders, big leaders from anywhere, from companies and assembly and state and federal to protect our people. Several who drove by honked in support. And now it's just not anti-immigrant, it's also women rights. It's also, also LGBTQIA rights. It's also basic human rights that he's standing against. And so we're, we're really asking people to support each other and support basic human rights. I think right now in today's environment, I think any move politically is going to cause a backlash and a lot of fear, just like you see today. Here at the Corral de Tierra Country Club, you can see right across the entrance, Monterey County Sheriff is posted up front here. Jeff Gorman is the Republican Party chair for Monterey County. He has a different take. We want the same things. We want a healthy community. We want to take care of our children. We want to be kept safe from crime. And uh, we don't want our children to be exposed to drugs or sexual perversion. Gorman supports the business leaders that invited the presidential candidate to Monterey County. I think they're being unfairly attacked. And it's, it's a shame because these people are the people who create jobs, make the money flow here. KION reached out several times to the agricultural executives listed as hosts for DeSantis's visit. We are working on getting a response. KION also wanted to speak with Governor DeSantis about his visit to Monterey County, but his press team told us that he was unavailable. Earlier this week, Salinas Council voted to denounce DeSantis' visit to the area, and with his attendance came some safety concerns. KION spoke with Monterey County Sheriff about what today entails for the department. Sheriff Tina Nieto says their job is not necessarily to protect one person, but to keep the overall peace in the community, pointing out that the department is there to protect everyone's rights. So what I want to tell the viewers is that if there's any type of protest and we are called um, because of the protests, we are there just to keep the peace. They disagree about things, but um, our job in the sheriff's, if it happens in, in the sheriff's jurisdiction, is primarily to keep the peace. In terms of notable incidents, the sheriff's office says a few vehicles did drive onto the private property of the event, honking and causing a disturbance. However, when the vehicles were approached by deputies, they complied and left the property. There were no other incidents related to DeSantis's visits.
And to be notified of news happening close to where you live, be sure to download our free app. You can do so by searching for KION. All right, how about we get a first look at weather with our Weather Authority Chief Meteorologist, Dan Sianca. Hey there, Dan. Hey there, Austin. It's been a nice couple of days here on the Central Coast. That's going to come to an end, but if you like the warm weather, we have more of that in the forecast, too. Oh, Let's okay. uh, show you what's going on out there tonight, though. Here's a live look from Domenico's on the wharf. At the moment, skies are mostly clear. We do have a few low clouds, and actually, they're just kind of right around the peninsula this evening, and that's about the only spot that we have any cloud cover. In fact, skies are otherwise clear here across the region tonight. Uh, you can barely even pick them out here on this map. In fact, this map's not really showing them all that well, but there's just a couple right over the peninsula at the moment, um, which I'm seeing on some other satellite sources. You also might be seeing that that full moon out there tonight. It is also a super moon. I think it's the second or third super moon of the year. The last one was a blue moon. It was a super moon. This is not a blue moon, just a regular super moon, but uh, might look a little bigger in the sky tonight. This was our sunset from Salinas, a nice glow in the sky as we concluded our Thursday. Fort Hunter, Liggett, and Bradley were our hot spots today at 86. Hollister not too far behind at 84. And we were in the upper 70s in Santa Cruz and Watsonville and low to mid 70s on the south side of the bay. Still a pretty nice day today. We had a little bit of wind earlier and it's still blowing out there tonight. Right now temperatures are in the 50s to around 60 degrees. Pretty mild and maybe a little cool in some spots. But as I mentioned, that wind still going, especially out on the outer coast where a gale warning remains in effect through 4 p.m. tomorrow from Point Pinos to Point Pedras Blanca. So still a little bit of wind, especially out on the exposed coast overnight tonight. Temperatures kind of leveling off in the mid 50s overnight. We will have a few patchy low clouds, but that's about it. Clouds will be more of a part of your forecast late tomorrow into the weekend, and we're going to add some rain in there as well. We're talking about that coming up. Great. Thank you so much, Dan. Despite weeks of speculation, city manager Steve Kerrigan is indeed staying with the city of Salinas. Kerrigan was initially appointed to the role during the pandemic. In the last few weeks, there were rumors he was moving on to become the city manager of San Bernardino. Kerrigan released a statement today saying he was in the running for the job, but has pulled his name out of the race. Kerrigan issued a statement saying, quote, We made a lot of progress on major issues like homelessness, affordable housing, crime and infrastructure, and I want to be here to continue that momentum. Kerrigan also says he can't imagine seeing himself working anywhere else. Well, after a four-month recruitment search, Watsonville Community Hospital is finally getting a new CEO. The Pajaro Valley Healthcare District approved the contract for Stephen Gray during its board meeting on Wednesday night. Gray is currently the chief administrative officer for the Sutter Bay Medical Foundation Santa Cruz Division. Interim CEO Matko Verranges will continue to serve in his role through the end of October. Gray will fully take the reins on November 1st. This evening, at a celebration in downtown Salinas, the Siembra Latinos Fund is encouraging and reminding people about the importance of investing in their community. In Monterey County, Latinos make up more than half of the population. La gente Latina are a majority, yet still face barriers. For that reason, leaders of the Siembra Latinos Fund, a component of the Community Foundation for Monterey County, están sembrando. They are sowing seeds of philanthropy by and for Latinos around the Central Coast. We are a, a, a substantial population. We, we fulfill a substantial group of the local population. And so servicing the local Latino community is really servicing the entire community because if one portion of the community grows, then we all grow together. Going on its sixth year, leaders of the Siembra Latinos Fund have handed out an estimated $100,000 in grants to nonprofits in various fields, education, mental health, and more. For example, last year, a STEM program for girls at El Sausal Middle School received a check for $20,000. It just feels that we're being embraced by this year the fund's advisory board members are raising a toast to a man who is a champion for affordable housing in monterey county hi i'm alfred diaz infante I'm the alfred diaz infante is the son of immigrant farm workers who was devoted to making his community better Tragically, he died in a car accident back in 2021. The Siembra Latinos Fund now announcing their inaugural Alfred Diaz Infante Award for those who make a difference by using their position and influence in the community to advance positive change and elevate the lives of Latinos within Monterey County. 
I am absolutely honored uh, and humbled. People like Dr. Ernesto Vela, who is the Assistant Superintendent of Student Services for Monterey County Office of Education. I try in my best, uh, whether as an educator, as a community leader, or just as an advocate for students uh, to uh, support them to reach their fullest um, potential. Having served as an elementary school teacher, principal, administrator, and program director, along with being a team leader for the Salinas Valley Dream Academy, Dr. Vela says in all of his experiences, his motivation has been to build positive influences around our area youth, having people who can help guide them to a path of success and reminds them about the responsibility of paying it forward. My strongest message to young people that no matter what you decide to do in life, that you leave a little ounce of space in your life to give back to your community uh, because there are other people like yourself that are coming behind you and it's so important that for us to reach out a hand and help, you know, that next generation. And, and again, Siembra Latinos is a field of interest fund of the Community Foundation for Monterey County, which provides financial stewardship, administrative support, and the services of a fully accredited community foundation held to rigorous national standards. Well, still ahead, the city of Santa Cruz is planning a breach of the San Lorenzo River Lagoon tomorrow. Why it's needed and the area you'll want to avoid. Also, we'll introduce you to the green spin on their tradition of low riding. And before we go, we're taking a live look outside on this Thursday evening. Our chief meteorologist, Dan Sianca, will join us once again on the other side of the break with your full weather forecast. You're watching KION News Channel 46 at 11.